When I made this video last year, I had no idea it would blow up the way it did. Apparently, a lot of people enjoyed the nostalgia of looking at a system with some really high-end components from the days of yore. In that video, I did some testing of older titles to see how the two 8800 GTX cards would crush games of their era. And then I also tested out some esports games that are still popular today, like CSGO. However, one of the comments I saw a few times was, why not test out some newer games? Now, I have no delusions that my now 11-year-old system will be able to keep up with titles like Ghost Recon Wildlands or Gears of War 4. But that actually didn't turn out to be the biggest stumbling block here. In fact, I ran into more problems than I was anticipating, and this video turned into something completely different. Looking to cool your CPU? Look no further than the Enermax Lick Fusion. Featuring a 240mm radiator, twin TB RGB fans, an innovative inline pump design, and an all new block with integrated flow meter and awesome RGB LED lighting, the Lick Fusion keeps your parts cool and your PC looking even cooler. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. As a quick refresher, this relatively modern Cougar case right here is housing some of the most powerful hardware that was available around 2007. The CPU is a Core 2 Extreme QX6850, Intel's $1,500 quad-core flagship, and the GPUs are twin 8800 GTXs running an SLI. The shiny gold 2x2GB memory kit is from OCZ, and our motherboard is the ASUS P5Q Deluxe. I started downloading Witcher 3 and Metro Last Light in the hopes of taking advantage of good SLI scaling, and Doom because it runs well even at low frame rates. But something rather unfortunate happened. As the games were downloading, I actually walked away and just let it go, and Windows decided to take an update without prompting. When I returned to the system to start my testing, it had rebooted and my somewhat janky SLI patch was actually completely bricked. This means that because this motherboard doesn't natively support SLI, I couldn't enable that feature as it was. I spent about five hours trying to get it to work again before finally giving up, defeated by our overlords from Seattle. So I pushed on with only one GPU functional, knowing full well that the results won't be nearly as good as I had initially hoped. Unfortunately, more problems. The only game that I could get to load was Metro Last Light. Witcher 3 would get to the splash screen and then crash, and Doom wouldn't even start the loading sequence. It's likely because the 8800 GTXs lack support for newer APIs, but given that I had no problem running Heaven Benchmark, I actually initially was hopeful, but those hopes were dashed. So I was kind of stuck. Where to go with this video? Well, how about seeing if our very outdated processor memory, and basically entire rest of the system can hang with one of the most powerful GPUs on the market. What if you had the stream system from 10 or 11 years ago and decided that after all this time, it was finally right to upgrade? Enter the GTX 1080 FE. Disregarding unfortunate price gouging, this is still one of the best you can get. How bad of a bottleneck will we run into here? I ran the same suite of tests that I had planned on doing initially with our 8800 GTXs and SLI, including the same set of different resolutions because, I mean, why not? This video went off the rails a long time ago anyway, so who cares? Let's get to the results. So it's no surprise that we had some pretty significant bottlenecking going on at all resolutions. Compared to results with a modern processor, we were well below what you could expect to see from even like the lowest end i3, or even something from the Sandy Bridge or Haswell generation. This was a fun experiment, but with a fairly predictable conclusion. The QX6850 was a monster back in the day, and even though it's certainly showing its age, that doesn't take away from how it blasted through gaming and productivity tasks way back in 2007. 
I'll probably continue to work on getting the SLI configuration back up and running and even replacing the motherboard if I need to. So maybe we can actually dive back into this video another time. So sorry for the abbreviated nature of this video, but I hope you enjoyed it either way. If you did, let me know what kind of performance you might expect in modern games from two 8800 GTXs with proper SLI. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.